any of you have heard or okay, been to Guam? I'll be quite surprised. Do you know where's Guam? Yes. Philippines. Near, okay, let's say if Singapore is here, if Philippines is here, Guam would. It is in Micronesia. So Singapore, Philippines, Guam. So to fly to Manila, it takes about three and a half hours, and then another three and a, three and a half hours to Guam. So that was where I was about maybe one two, one, two months ago when this thing happened. Okay, Guam is an island, and it's actually quite popular among Japanese and Koreans. It's like a very beautiful island, nice beaches. I went there to do some diving, a bit of hiking, and the day before this happened, my dive guide told me, oh, you, you need to visit this cave place. So it's like super beautiful and all that. So I went the next day. To get to the cave, um, you would, let's say this is the main road. You have to go to this side road for drive, uh, this little small track of, uh, around maybe five, 10 minutes. And then you walk for another couple of minutes and then you reach the cave. Okay, the cave um, is a pretty big opening, maybe about two stories high. Then you walk in a little bit, and then you see a platform. They built a concrete platform there because it's quite a popular cave among visitors and, and locals. And there around the platform is a pool of crystal clear water. So I was well prepared. I dumped my backpack here, and I took out my shoes, got into my swimming gear, put on my snorkel, my, my, my GoPro torchlight, underwater torchlight, and then jumped in. Cold water, but after a while, it's like, wow, fantastic. Really beautiful. A little bit eerie because it's quite dark, but the torchlight. You know. So when swimming, swimming came out a bit, you know, everything's fine. There was, okay, there was nobody at all. I, I didn't see a single soul. After about maybe 15 minutes of exploring, getting you know, super awesome, this bag vanished. That was a horrible, horrible feeling. Why it was horrible? Partly because of what was in, inside. So everything important was in there, except for my laptop, which was still in the hotel room. But things like... Uh, <coughs> Phone, passport, money, all, <laughs> all, literally all. So, wallet, times two, yeah, credit cards. <laughs> It hadn't hit me then, yeah. But it, it wasn't in the bag, you know. But it went along with the bag. Hotel cut. Yeah, but the one. Yeah, okay. Minor, yeah. Hotel cut. Key cut. Okay, wallet times two actually is a good, good travel hack. I have a decoy wallet, so if I do get robbed, I'm okay because I'll give them my decoy wallet with some local currency. That's Okay, Guam is part of the US, as a US territory. So my USD, part of my USD would be there. Some credit cards would be there. So I'll just give it to them. And my real wallet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what else? I, went, I was swimming. Yeah. What else can you think of? Car keys, my rental car. Okay, shoes was outside the bag and it wasn't stolen, luckily. <laughs> Car keys, uh, you know, mobile, internet. Oh, there was a camera inside. What the green have out in the first place? Good question. Okay, since you asked, I, when I travel, I often stay in the hostels. So if you stay in a hostel, many times you don't, yeah, you just bring everything along. Also, I'm lazy, like, yeah. 
Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So, okay, uh, pro there are a lot of other things there I can't remember now, but yeah, these are some of the key things that were gone. So when I discovered this was stolen, I was like horrified, shocked, just whatever, yeah. I actually shouted out in, in horror and hoping to see someone running off so I can <laughs> chase, but nothing happened. So I, I ran out of the cave and kind of cut my foot in the process because I was still bad, didn't, yeah, but then after limping, I limped back wearing my shoes and I realized that I got too bad, everything's gone. That, with my shoes, then I ran to the car which was parked here. It was still there, thankfully. Yeah, even though the car keys were, were in the back. Okay, good thing about that bag is it's a military-style bag with around 30 over compartments in there. So to find anything, it takes a while. Huh? So they probably haven't discovered the car keys yet. So then, what to do? I mean, steal the car. Well, the car there. I, I, I didn't watch enough movies to know how to... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do the wire thing, right? Yeah. Th that was my rental car, but the keys are gone. Uh, so. Okay, there was nobody there. <laughs> Completely secluded. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Secluded. <laughs> For the latecomers. <laughs> okay, there might be someone hiding in the bushes, yeah, but he's probably not going to let me. You know, the, 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 he has my bag anyway, right? <laughs> Okay, so okay, thankfully I did a bit of research before going there and when I went it was a Saturday. So let me just write it down. Saturday. <laughs> so I knew that locals visited that place during weekends. If I if it happened to me during a weekday then I'd be you know, a bit deeper shit. But Saturday. So I waited actually you know, maybe forty five minutes. A pickup truck with two locals came along and they were going there for a swim as well. So I asked to borrow the phone. Yeah. And then they said, uh, so yeah, they, they kindly lent me the phone, but it was so, ulu, uh, so, so secluded that there was no reception. So they drove me to the main road, you know, and then managed to call the police, and then drove me back here while I waited for the police. And then police came maybe about 45 minutes later, took, uh, took my statement and all that, and then they said, okay, they'll help me call the car rental company. Yeah. Then, so they drove off, because no reception, right? <coughs> they drove off and then helped me call the car rental company, which I waited for maybe another one hour before they, the car rental company came to pick me up. Yeah. And then one guy drove off the car, one guy brought me back to the hotel. Yeah. So that was part one, chapter one of my story stolen and how I got back to the hotel. During the drive back to the hotel, the guy asked me, why do you go there? You know, like alone, you know, this, this place has history. I'm like, what history? <laughs> he said, you know, there's a lot of crime there. Yeah, even the locals who, who lent me the phone, they told me, you know, people's stuff gets stolen, cars get broken into. And the guy who drove me, he said, you know, re recently some girl got raped there. So I'm like, okay. I'm Glad I'm not a girl, but yeah. Anyway, so I made it safely back to the hotel and very happy for the moment. Yeah. Okay, by the. Sorry? Yeah. So, chapter two in the hotel room, happy for the moment, and then starting to call the credit card companies and you know, put on. Okay, by then it was late afternoon and I was getting quite hungry. This thing happened about 10.30 in the morning. I didn't have lunch. So by around like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I was damn hungry and like, shit, what am I going to do about food? Okay, it's nice that I'm in the hotel, right? You know, safe and all, but I'm going to starve here. Right? I thought you said you were the hostel. Ho hotel. Hostel. <laughs> yeah. Ho hostel is, I said I'm used to traveling and <laughs> staying in hostels, yeah. So I was in a ho hotel, damn hungry. Luckily in the fridge, I had some leftover ice cream, which you know, Ben and Jerry's, you know, maybe a little bit left. So I, I devoured it. Helped me a tiny bit, but I was still quite hungry. In the corner of my room was a plastic bag of 
souvenirs for my colleagues, uh, chocolates and biscuits. I'm like, oh, Lord, should I eat that or not? <laughs> <laughs> Getting, starting to get desperate. But anyway, my immediate problem then was how the hell do I get cash and how the hell do I get food to eat? Uh, it's, it's quite sad to be able to be in a, stay in a hotel but you know, starve to death, right? Yeah. So one of the things I did was post, post on Facebook, you know, ask for a little bit of help. But unfortunately, like most of you, my friends have not been to Guam and they don't know anyone who's in Guam. You know, no, nobody goes to Guam from, from Singapore. Yeah. Probably, yeah. But how do you collect money with Western uh, Union? Sometimes. Well, better than zero chance, right? Yeah, so I, I had to... Okay, the other thing is, Western Union, it was a distance away. Yeah, so, then taxi... They still have a way of getting money to you. Yeah, that's, a, that's one way. Yeah, but the, the chances are not very great. And then the risks are high. Because also, I don't have money for taxi. And the taxi is quite expensive. So, I had to consider other options. So, that's one option, which was in the back of my mind, but lower in my backlog. Yeah. So, I called credit card companies, you know, partly to cancel and tell them of my ordeal and say, hey, can you send me over? You know, I, I don't know if you've seen advertisements of credit card companies when you lose a card, next day you get it, you know, <laughs> smiling and all that. Unfortunately, like, I called, a lot of them say, oh, it will take three weeks or two weeks because, you know, Guam... <laughs> okay. I had something like seven credit cards. So, wallets. One thing I want to share with you: put one credit card in your safe at home. Sorry. In your shoe. Oh, you put one in your. Yeah, I might get blisters. Okay, I I do have credit cards distributed everywhere, so I still had some at home. And then you so, have a copy of all the. I, I do. So that also kind of saved me for my hotel bill later. Yeah, but for cash, how do you get cash from there? I asked, I asked the hotel, can, can you, I have the credit card number, but can you give me cash and all that? They refused. Yeah. Do you have Bitcoin? Don't have, yeah. I have. <coughs> yeah, I had. <laughs> so one option, similar option I had was PayPal. Yeah, so I was. I started calling anyone I had contact with, so my dive guides before the, the days before to, to ask them, hey, do you have PayPal? If you have PayPal, I can pay you via PayPal. Because I still had active credit cards tied to my PayPal account, and that credit card isn't in, wasn't stolen, so still active. Yeah, but the guy I called, okay, he said uh, he didn't have PayPal, so I thought, okay, I'll leave him in the backlog and then try other options. So I posted on Facebook. Okay, one, one lucky thing, kind of, or, thought, or so I thought that was lucky, was that before I went, I was telling this friend that, hey, I'm going to Guam. Then she said, oh, Guam. My brother's also going to Guam. Yeah. He's actually, he, he was there, he, he had to go there for a business trip. So he was there, like, two, three weeks or something. So I thought, oh, maybe the brother is still there. I can link up with him. She didn't respond to me on Facebook, so I was desperate. I called her. She was actually in the airport ready to fly off to, for a holiday. So she's, I asked, hey, is your brother still in Guam? He said, oh, come back already. <laughs> I'm like, uh, does your brother have friends in Guam? You know, maybe uh, getting quite desperate, right? Yeah. Then she asked me what happened. I, I told her what happened, then she said, okay, you, let me check on something, then I'll, I'll get back to you. Okay, basically what happened was she had this, she has this friend whom she hasn't talked to in about five years, but she remembers seeing him mentioning on his Facebook that he's going to Guam. So she messaged him on Facebook to say, hey, my friend is in, in Guam, lost everything, needs some help. When he received that Facebook message, he's like, must be a scam. <laughs> right, I'm sure you encounter these. 
passport missing scams, right? So he was gonna ignore it. Like. Then he thought, hey, but this one quite quite tailored you know, because it mentions Guam. So he messaged back saying, okay, why not you give me a call? So my friend gave him a call and turned out, hey, actually it was true. La. Lucky for me. So, so basically she linked us up and after she, she gave me the details of, of him and then turned off the phone because she was already on the plane about to fly off. So long story short, I met him that evening for dinner where he passed me some cash. Okay, the, the lucky thing again is that he was in Guam also, he's Singaporean. He was in Guam for a business trip as well. Like I said, nobody goes there for holiday. And because he travels so much for business, he seldom mentions it on Facebook. It was just that time he thought, ah, just post on Facebook, going to Guam. So if he didn't, I don't know, I'll be quite, you know, some people say sell backside, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's chapter two, how I got some cash to save my ass. Yeah. Quite literally. Chapter three is how I got, you know, passport is gone, right? How to get the damn replacement passport and all that. Okay. okay, the good thing about Guam, luckily, is that it's a it's part of the US, so everything's in English. So if you make a police report, you do everything in, in, in English, they'll, they'll, they'll give you a report in English and so on. For countries where it's not English, then you have a whole set of problems. Right? So I didn't have to face those. Okay, but the, the, okay, to, to, if, you, if you lose a passport overseas, what you need is to get a replacement passport called a DOI, Document of Identity, which is a piece of paper official looking with your photo on it with some text and all that. So that is like good enough to get you back to Singapore and then they'll take it back and then you apply for a new passport. To get a DOI, so you have to report to the nearest consulate and all that. So the consulate is under MFA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. From the consulate, they can issue out a DOI, but the DOI is owned by ICA. Immigration and Checkpoints Authority of Singapore, the passport, the guys in charge of the passport. Yeah. So for them to issue, for MFA to dis issue the DOI, MFA has to, I ICA has to agree. Um, and to get your DOI, you need a police report. Problem with Guam was that after I report, they gave me a case number, but the police report would take five to 10 working days. <laughs> So that means like two, another two or three more weeks and gone. That's sort of out of the question. So I think to cut the long story short, MFA basically tried to get me an exception from ICA. ICA at first refused. In desperation, I asked my mom to contact the member of parliament. <laughs> <coughs> because... <coughs> Okay, some things, uh, some things, let's say if your kid can't get into a primary school, you contact the MP, no use, uh, they can't help you. But MPs love to help cases where you know, if it's escalated high enough, it makes sense, they can make an exception. So they, they can score points as well. Uh, I hope this is recorded. But, <laughs> so, so my MP was very happy to help and once his name appeared in the picture, things escalated. And long story short, finally ICA approved the DOI, which then my mom had to go to ICA to apply for after it's approved. But for her to apply, I also had to write a letter of authorization, which I have to sign, scan, send to her so that she can go to ICA to, to collect and all that. Then, then Korea over to Guam. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, then I could fly back to Singapore. Yeah. One thing I forgot to mention, Guam, although it's part of US, right? So the nearest US consulate was San Francisco. <laughs> so like, which is, you know, Singapore, Philippines, Guam, San Francisco, <laughs> uh, yeah, out, outside. So that's why it made more sense to send from Singapore. So they also had to make another exception because the, is the, San, the US jurisdiction, but you no, know, yeah. 
actually, there's one more chapter coming back to, to Singapore. Yeah, I'll keep that one short. It's, we're almost out of time. Okay, so Guam to Singapore, I, to, to Singapore, I mentioned. I took the Guam to Manila, which was three and a half hours. I had a five-hour stopover, and then there would be another three and a half hours. Five hours at the waiting area, the plane wasn't there yet. It's like, oh, I'm just after, okay, I was stuck for a whole week in Guam, right? So finally, after that whole week of dealing with these guys, I finally could come back. And then now you give me a, a, another waiting period. Okay, but long story short, five hours became six hours. So one hour later, we were on the plane. Everyone was eager to go. So on the plane, in the terminal, the plane started reversing. The cabin crew is like showing, doing the demon, safety demonstration when suddenly the plane went boom. It's like, shit. Everyone's face went blank, black. The, the cabin crew is like blur. Some of them, you know, you see their face turn black for that split sp uh, half a second before they try to smile again. You know, <laughs> everything's okay, you know. <clears throat> About maybe 15 minutes later, the pilot said, oh, yeah, basically there was some contact between the, uh, the nose landing gear and the tow vehicle <laughs> uh, collision. <coughs> yeah, and he didn't blame anybody, so it was probably his fault. <laughs> <coughs> so he had to investigate, and then so investigate, investigate. After maybe 20 minutes, they said, okay, uh, good news, we don't have to disembark. It's like, oh. Yeah, because disembark, then you have to wait for a new plane and board. Oh, it's crazy. And so they, have, they need to fix it. Then after maybe about uh, 20 minutes, they said, OK, good news. Uh, we are now fixing the, the, the landing gear. We've fixed, uh, we've fixed uh, two of the parts. There's just one more part which they're still locating. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, so then wait, wait, wait. Maybe an, uh, half an hour later, they said, okay, good news. They've uh, located the third part. It only takes about 10 minutes to replace, yeah. uh, but it will take about 30 minutes to bring over here. <laughs> okay, so about another hour later, Captain said, okay, good news. We've replaced the final part. All we're missing is a nut. <laughs> and if we can't find a nut, we may have to disembark and get on a new plane. I'm like, isn't it easier to just grab a nut from another plane and just, you know, rather than, yeah, but now, you know, you know how these things are. So maybe another half an hour later, finally, Good news was good news. So we could leave. By then it was dark. We were in the plane for another, we were sitting there for four hours. <laughs> so I'm like, when we were moving, I'm like thinking, oh, bloody hell, I should be in, on land in Singapore airport, not still in Manila airport. Yeah. So, but finally, yeah, got back to Singapore after that big delay and got home safely. Okay, we, we still have time for an epilogue. <laughs> yeah. See, I had a camera. This didn't belong to me. It belonged to my, my god sis. Okay, and luckily what, what was not stolen was she also lent me a GoPro, which I was busy filming. My torch light, my snorkel, my shoes were still there. So those are good. So after I came back to Singapore, after a few days, I decided to properly unpack and then I can return what's left of the GoPro and the camera accessories to my godsis, except that the GoPro was gone. Okay, the mistake I made was to check it into the check-in luggage when I came back. I forgot that you, know, you shouldn't leave valuables in your check-in luggage. Okay, one reason why I made that mistake is because my carry-on was still in Guam. 
don't know where in Guam, but my, my normal carry on bag with, with everything is still in Guam. So I, I had a waterproof dive bag, but it's quite small. So enough, enough space for my laptop and a few other small items, but not that much space for a GoPro. So I thought, oh, yeah, I wasn't thinking, just threw it into my check in luggage. So my epilogue is that GoPro is also gone. I felt like someone who has been beaten up, you know, raped, lost consciousness, woke up, someone saw me and kicked me in the balls. You know. <laughs> That's all. Thanks for enjoying my uh, audio. <coughs> you got a question? Yeah. What are the three things that you would have done? Oh, obviously, <laughs> this was... I really don't know where I would have put my things. In, in hindsight, I would, might have left more... Okay, I might... I might have uh, left more of my valuables in the hotel, but then, then again, when I did the research on the caves, it didn't. There was no indication that there was it was a crime hotspot. So, uh, and it's could have taken it if there's nobody. Yeah. I didn't know why you didn't put your passport inside the car and stuff like that. Why did you take the passport? Lazy. <laughs> yeah, I reached there. First thing I do is walk, go out. Yeah. Actually, there was a. At the cave, there was a nearby cliff or so. So I was tracking. I didn't know how far it was. I tracked to the cliff, took a lot of photos in this camera. You know, then, then went to the cave, and then the cave was there. The water is there. Just put the stuff there and jumped in. So it's hard to say what I would have done differently for this. Maybe try to find a more better spot to put it. But then I don't think there was much of a better spot there. Another way if you want to do this again, yeah, I'm going to go there to dance. Oh, well, then I'll have someone along. <laughs> <laughs> Locals don't even dare to go there alone. Uh, yeah. I'll suggest every time you have like, at least a copy of a passport. That's, that's not very useful. That's not yeah. I, have well, it, I have it in soft copy in my computer. So it, it, it served no well, purpose. I was able to draw because of a soft copy of the passport. Okay, good for you. Yeah. And you can print that out actually. Yeah. Okay. 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 Do you get travel insurance? Sorry? Travel insurance. Oh, that's another mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> See, Guam is a very safe place. <laughs> if, if Japanese tourists love that, actually Japanese tourists are some of the most vulnerable tourists. They are, they are like very bad at all this. So uh, I, uh, I tend to be quite selective. The other thing about insurance is it may not be very easy to claim. So if it's lost, they say, oh, this is your fault. Mm. So some of them, if it's, they say it's your fault, then pfft, sorry. So not so straightforward. It depends on which issue. I think not, definitely not for sure what you're claiming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So it's it, it, true. <laughs> Any other comments? OK, if not. Worst case, you can always try to borrow money from them, I in fact, the MFA officer handling my case was my friend's friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, social media, I, I found out through Facebook and all that. Yeah. <laughs> then, then there were people in ICA also whom I had indirect connection with and, and all that, but it didn't really help very much. Yeah. Basically, Facebook had Yes. <laughs> Not directly, but indirectly. Yeah. Yeah. Because your laptop is still with you. Yes. Facebook is good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, thanks. Time's up. <laughs>